Well, hey everybody, Tom Miller here. So, so excited to spend a little bit of time with you uh, today and, and just, you know, really excited to, you know, kick off this uh, school year. Um, as, you know, some of you may know, over the last, uh, you know, 18 months, I've been the head of four charter schools, um, just helping them uh, bridge the gap, you know, between, uh, you know, where they currently are and their, and their new leader. So we go when we hire the leaders and, and, you know, so this, you know, a past week I ended up my fourth, you know, stint, my fourth 90 day stint of a different school. And, and, you know, just, just really, you know, starting to, 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 you know, to feel what school feels like, you know, our students are uh, fully masked here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and, you know, we had our uh, positive COVIDs and of course there's, you know, daily anxiety and, you know, daily messages from the parents, but, it really, really struck me over the last uh, 48 hours, um, you know, one of the most important leadership uh, programs we have is our inner circle. And this is a, a weekly collaboration of uh, charter school principals. And we come together and we, you know, talk about our, our big issues and our little issues. And, and you know, we get, you know, we get insight uh, from everybody. And COVID, COVID, COVID is on everybody's mind. And I and I know I said it out loud about two months ago that I think returning to school, to transitioning back to school is going to be harder this year than it's ever been in the past. And, and that's happening. And I just really feel that September, <laughs> September is really going to stink. I mean, if you think about it in a normal, traditional school year, you have your start of the year meetings in you know, August or start of September. And then it's usually by October, like that newness kind of starts to wait off and, you know, it's just, you know, wane away and, you know, people start to fall back to their original habits. And it's when, you know, like the leader really needs to make sure that they're being clear with expectations and having daily conversations and, and really just, you know, uh, painting a positive picture of the future. But COVID-19 has accelerated that timeline and and so, you know, some of you may be in your second or third week of school already, and some of you may be uh, preparing for your in-service days, or maybe, maybe this upcoming week is your first week of school. Either way, September is going to stink if you don't start doing these things. And when I mean, you know, stink, like I'm talking about just, you know, challenging, uh, you know, school culture and climate and, you know, challenging a behaviors, not just by adults, but by but by the students. So I wanted to share these, these, you know, out of our, you know, inner circle, we started to think through some, you know, strategies, uh, the, you know, what, what could we do as leaders to be proactive and, and, and less reactive, um, in terms of this, of this change. And so, so, you know, the one thing that I think everybody needs to do is, is to celebrate what you've accomplished. Okay. So, since March of 2020, uh, you know, all, you know, public and private schools have across the globe have had some sort of shutdown, some sort of, you know, quarantine shutdown, you know, maybe you were teaching hybrid, maybe you were fully remote, um, you know, maybe you didn't have school, maybe the school year, you know, just, either way, you know, think about all of the work that you've done to turn your school upside down um, to, to, you know, maintain you know, the best culture, the best academics that you could in a completely, <laughs> a completely transformational environment, right? You had to transform what education used to look like at your school from a brick and mortar setting. You know, maybe the only schools that didn't have to would, you know, would be virtual schools, right? But so it's important that you take the time to accomplish, right, to celebrate what you did accomplish, and, 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 you know, maybe this is listing out all of the positives, right? All of the positive things that have happened. This is not just from your school, but this is also from, you know, from a personal standpoint. Maybe you got to, maybe you got to travel more, you know, you know maybe you got to spend more time with family, you know, maybe you got to, you know, like, you know, my dog, you know, Dorsey passed away last, last October and we had her for 15 years and, and as sad as that was, gosh, if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't have spent those last, you know, seven months, you know, with her every day. I wouldn't have seen my kids, you know, really, really accelerated other sports. And now my daughter's playing ice hockey because we played hockey a lot during, you know, quarantine. And, and so there's just things that you could definitely bring together in your community, you know, to celebrate. And then also you need to give time for people to grieve and mourn, right? Because there was human loss and, and there was just, you know, loss of, you know, 
emotional capacity. And so, you, you know, you're asking them to transition back into uh, normal. I've heard a lot of principals use the word normal. Well, there's nothing normal, right? This is an evolution of what school used to be. But you're asking them to transition back in a very, very quick time, right? And we knew the date was coming, <laughs> but it's still hard, you know. You know, people have been used to working from home. They have been working, you know, they've made makeshift offices and makeshift classrooms. And, and so not only do they need to celebrate what went well, they also need time to grieve and mourn of what we're not going to do anymore, right? We're not going to have school from your, from your living room anymore. You know, it's, you know, grieving is important and time to really kind of look back, right? So, so, you know, maybe, you know, like an exercise I've done with some schools is to, is to write down all of the things that we need to let go of, you know, the working from home, the, you know, the uh, flexible days, right? And maybe you light them on fire, maybe you throw them in the trash can, maybe you, maybe you crumple them up in a ball and you throw them as far as you can, and then you stomp on them, right? These, whatever these attachments that we have to let go of, to be able to move forward, right? Moving forward back into school as, as, as we want it to be, not as we remember it, as we want it to be. That's a very, very important piece, okay? So first thing we're celebrating, we're giving time to you know, grieve and mourn and, and let go of attachments and we're, and we're moving forward. And this, is, and this is an important part, right? So once you can get rid of those attachments, right? And, and hey, you know, here's what we're celebrating. These were all the positives, right? We're going to keep those, those good, you know, feelings and we're going to, you know, keep those in our lives, right? You know, spending more time, you know, with our children or whatever that may be. And then, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to communicate the vision. And, and, and one key way to do this is to use the four P's. Uh, and, you know, this is something I learned from uh, Patrick Lencioni. The four P's are purpose, picture, plan, and part. Purpose, picture, plan, and and uh, part. So let's start with the purpose. You know, team team members need to know and understand why, and they need to be reminded all the time. So the what's the purpose of your school, right? What is what is why do people come to your school? It's for learning and safety and security and to create a better future, and it's to you know, maybe it's to be the difference maker in your, you know, community. Maybe it's to, maybe it's to, um, it's to eradicate generational poverty, like, like, you know, Sugar Creek uh, Charter School. Or maybe it's to, it's to rethink or retool education as we know it, like, you know, Charlotte Lab. Or it's to solve global problems locally, like, you know, like Explorers, the, you know, the school that my kids go to. I mean, you know, what is your purpose? What is your mission? Like, what, like, what does your school do? And get really, really clear about what we do and why we're great at it. We're great at this. When your kid leaves our school, they're going to be dynamite at this skill, whatever you know, the skill may be. You know, because you know, people forget, right? And another part of this exercise might be having every single teacher, every single employee write down and communicate to the whole staff why they became a teacher. Like, I became, I've thought about this a lot. Why was I an exceptional children's teacher? You know, why did I teach? I loved, you know, teaching self-contained students with autism that were, you know, cognitively uh, delayed and, you know, some severely cognitively delayed and, and you know, some were nonverbal and, and like I think back on it, and I've been told, but well, you're such an advocate, right? You you know you fought for them, you know. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, because you know, I, I feel at times that nobody fought for me. Not that I had a bad life at all, so don't cry for me at all, you know. But I have a speech impediment, and I and I somehow got through school right, pretty much doing the bare minimum. And like you know, no, you know, I don't know. Like I didn't fight for me, and nobody seemed to fight for me either. And I wasn't fighting for. I mean, whatever those things may be, like, what got you into school? I remember, you know, doing this a couple of years ago with this, you know, with this great uh, charter school in Durham, IDYL, and the, and the, you know, and the principal, you know, talked about how she was the only African-American child in an all-white school, and, and her, you know, uh, teacher used to, used to make fun of her dialect and, 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 you know, correct her, and, and she's like, I, 
I became a teacher in education to protect to protect myself, right? Whoever that kid was at my school. I mean, it was powerful and, and it really just brought a lot of energy into, you know, into the room. So, so what's the purpose? So, so get really clear on the purpose. That's the first P. Now the second P is picture. Give them an image of, of true north, right? Of, of what it will look like when the organization navigates through this necessary change. Right. As you evolve. Right. If you as you transition back into school and have this new evolved education plan and this this really strong, effective plan and and and, you know, uh, you know, clarity in your role that a plan and, and really getting people to see what success will look like. And so a question that I ask, you know, charter school board members and, you know, uh, charter school leaders is, is, you know, what will your school look like three years from today? Two years from today, one year from today, you know, I don't care what the time frame is, but you've got to be able to paint a picture of success. It's critical because where there's no faith in the future, there's no power in the present. And if I don't know what destination I'm going to, then I'm not really sure why I'm fighting for it. So, for example, you know, my son and I, we just took a trip down to down to Disney, right? And I had the, you know, GPS and it, it showed where it was and what time we should get there. And if we made an off turn, right? If we had to go, you know, uh, to an exit, that was that that was a distraction, right? It added more time, you know, to us. But the only reason I knew it added more time is because I had a very clear destination, Animal Kingdom. It knew where I was going. You as a leader need to be able to paint a picture of where are you all going? And that way you can make a decision and everything that comes into your universe you can decide, is this or is this not going to take us closer to our end? If it's not going to take us closer to our end, then it's a distraction. Don't do it, right? So, but paint the picture, okay? Paint the picture. It's going to create higher levels of productivity. You're going to raise your morale uh, because everybody wants to be part of a winning result. Everybody, okay? So, first P is purpose. The second P is picture, okay? The third one is plan. Everybody needs to know the plan. Now, this plan might be surrounded around, you know, COVID and, you know, safety and, you know, security and, and you know, what, what will we do? Like, you know, people want to know and understand, you know, the metrics. If there's anything that I've learned over these, these last, you know, uh, two weeks as, as we opened up this charter school uh, was that, you know, people want to know, like, well, what are we going to do if, right? You know, people want to know that you have a plan as a leader. And to be unclear is to be unkind, <laughs> right? You want, to, you want certainty and you want you know, people to feel confident that, that you, as a leader, have a plan. Now, your plan may change, right, depending upon the conditions and circumstances and the environment, right? So if I was, when I was driving back from, you know, Florida and I had to go to Myrtle Beach because I was leading a a board retreat, there was multiple roads that were closed and I had to find that, you know, but my GPS did that for me. So your plans can change, but you're married to the goal, right? You're married to that purpose. You're married to that picture. So you're letting them know, here's the current plan, right? Here's the data that's going to inform us, letting us know whether or not we're moving closer to that destination or not. That's a, that's a real, real critical piece. Knowing if you're moving you know, closer. So what are the evidences that we're going to rely on? So for this, you know, I had a couple questions about, well, when might we shut down? Okay, well, here's what a cluster is. This is what the health department is, you know, defining a cluster. And if we get this many close, you know, you know, uh, contacts where we do our tracing and everything, then we're going to do this, right? We're going to take this step. We're going to, you know, quarantine the class for 10 days, or we're going to go into remote learning or, you know, whatever that is. Like we had an outline plan. And the incoming head of school did a really great job of, you know, mapping all that out, right? It, it was, to me, it was very, very clear. So what's, what's the purpose? Why does my organization exist, right? Why does my team exist? What's the picture? Where are we going to? So security, safety, high levels of education, you know, whatever that, you know, picture that you're painting. And then what's the plan? People want to know what the plan is. And then finally, the fourth P is part, part. Make sure everyone has a part to play in this transition plan. Everybody wants to know they have a role to the goal, but I want clarity in what that role is. So I, so I know, I know what I'm being asked to do. Okay, and and it's okay to be 
uncertain, right? You know, going back to the plan of the part, it's okay to be uncertain, but it's not okay, you know, to be unclear, right? So you got to be really clear with the purpose, really clear with the picture. You got to be at least semi, you know, clear with the plan. Like these are the steps that we're taking, or at least this is the next step. You don't need to know all the steps. You need to know the next step as, as part of the plan. Here's what we're going to do. And here's the data. And then here's your part in it, right? Here's your part in it. So, you know, during that, you know, transition time, you know, here's your part, you know, your, you know, COVID safety uh, patrol or in your classroom, I need you to do this. And, you know, there, there uh, was a teacher that I asked, hey, can you send out a message about, because uh, I didn't have all the emails and the you know, system wasn't working. And it was like, I don't feel comfortable. I was like, you don't have to answer any questions. The only part I need you to have is two things. Send the email and ensure that you are uh, following our safety protocols in the classroom. I'll handle everything else. And they uh, uh, replied, thank you so much for that support. I don't want to put employees in a position where they're not comfortable. Okay. And I need to make sure that they're very, very clear about these, you know, uh, four P's. And I could say, well, they might not know, know the whole plan, right? So I need to go back and make sure, because this is a big part of it. You're communicating these four P's daily. <laughs> You're never not communicating these four P's. Because, you know, your goal is that you want to get the hearts, hearts and the feelings on board. You, you, you know, you, first you, you know, you know, before you can reach for the hand, you, you've got to reach for the heart and you got to let, you know, people know that, you know, hey, I'm thinking of you all these aspects. Here is, here is how we're going to, here's what success will look like. Here's how I believe at this current time we're going to get there. And here's your role in that, right? Here is your role to that goal. Now, there's one, there's one final part, right? So we've talked about we're going to celebrate what we've accomplished so far, right? In the past, we're going to remember it, but we'll, you know, we're not going to live on it, right? Because it is what it is. We're going to give time to mourn and grieve, you know, the loss and give time for the transition and help, you know, uh, people transition into a work environment because some folks, I mean, think about this. Some folks haven't been in the classroom since March of 2020. Your kindergarten students have maybe never even been in school before. Your you know, first graders were only in there for, what, you know, six or seven months. Like, just think about the lack, the lack of time, right? So you may be counting on kids and families to do things that they haven't done for 18 months. Think on that, okay? So celebrate what you've accomplished. Give time, grieving and mourning to, you know, de-attach de Communicate the vision using the four P's of purpose, picture, plan, and part, and share it daily. Every single day you're sharing it. Vision leaks, everybody. Vision leaks. You need to be every single day sharing those four P's. Here's why we exist. Here's where we're going. Here's the strategy. And here's your part in it. Every day. And lastly, if you're married, and I love my wife. I've known her since seventh grade. We've been together for um, over, over 25 years as a couple. And so when I say sometimes little things, right, little things turn into big things, you know, like maybe you didn't take the trash out. Maybe you didn't communicate well about the timing on something or you had to be out of town or, I mean, whatever it is, right? That big underlying, you know, piece, right? That big thing that you did to upset that person, <laughs> they may not communicate that. But these little things like not doing the dishes or not having things straight or whatever it may be, they turn into big things, right? They turn into giant things. And so we've got this big underlying issue this big elf in the room covid is and it doesn't matter whether you how you fall on like the political i don't care covid is is here right it's in existence minds and you know physical and it's it's creating anxiety and it's creating issues for uh, people now think about all the things that erode climate in your school so 
Um, the copier not working, the internet going down, not having all the materials on time, maybe a classroom not being ready, the master schedule not being ready. I mean, whatever these little erosion little things that are little to you as a principal are really big to your staff. And so as a leader, I am, I am, I am like super encouraging you to get into rooms daily, ask people, what are you working on? Or, well, one is, how are you doing? What are you working on? And how can I help, right? You're just really, and you're asking them, what's something in the way that I don't know? What's something, you know, what, what's, what's something you're, you know, doing every day that you probably don't have to do that's within my, my control? Like, it, your job as a leader is to remove as many barriers as possible. And so that's what I want you to do. I want you to go on a listening party. I want you and your administrative team to be asking questions and then just being quiet, right? Just, just getting really, really curious about the day-to-day -day of your teachers. Be really observant in, in, in the overall impact on the culture um, because uh, this is going to be really hard. And I still agree, it's going to be harder to reopen your school than it was to close your school and to turn your school and flip it upside down, bringing people out of this environment, um, this, you know, a stay at home where they're, where they're right back into the heat of the action. And uh, most, you know, schools are, you know, you know, completely back. So to recap, one, celebrate what you've accomplished since March of 2020. Two, Give time and opportunity to grieve, to mourn, to talk through, to discuss, um, to maybe erate, right? To, to write it down on paper and, and, and you know, burn it, right? Just grieve on, on, on the loss and grieve on, I've got to, I've got to transition back in to a day-to-day -day working environment. I'm not working from home anymore. Three, communicate the vision using the 4P model, purpose, picture, plan, part. Find ways to share it daily. Every time you're in front of your staff, they need to know why your organization exists, where are we heading, what's the strategy behind it, and what's their part in that strategy. What are you expecting them to do? And lastly, Ensure you don't let little things turn into big things, right? Shovel those piles when it's small. When you see something in the way, eliminate it, right? Take some things off the plates of your teachers and your staff um, and be, you know, and, you know, declare noble intent and see everybody as a 10. And, and I know you have an organization to lead and you have really hard decisions and everybody's coming to you because they need you, right? They need you as a leader to be able to take it to the next level. So hopefully that added value to you. Uh, it's, it's, you know, something from our inner circle that was really, you know, kind of hitting me lately. And, uh, you, you know, I felt this was, uh, you know, a good way to share it out. Um, if you don't know about our um, inner circle and you're looking for a, for a, a community of leaders, of like-minded leaders um, who, who each and every week, you know, talk about, you know, their, you know, challenges and, 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 and they're asking like-minded people, uh, to help them through their challenges and, and, you know, give them advice and give them more strategies. And each and every week, you're, you're going to walk out of this, you know, virtual uh, meeting just, you know, feeling re uh, renewed, right? You're going to have new strategies, new ideas, uh, new thoughts, new plans, or, or just affirmation of what, what, you know, you're doing. Because our job can be very, very isolating as, uh, you know, leaders. And if you don't have a community of people that you trust that you, uh, you can bounce ideas off, um, that gets really hard, right? Because... You know, so every Monday and Friday we have live meetings. Um, you, you know, you can pick the day that the day and the time that works for your schedule um, and come in with this is what kept me up all last night. <laughs> How are you guys handling this? What are some ways I could, you know, do better? Who has a resource, you know, for this? So you're not constantly recreating. Uh, so if you're looking for that environment, um, I'm going to put the link in the comments of this uh, video, but you can also go to my uh, website at lbleaders.com. That's leadersbuildingleaders.com, lbleaders.com. And at the very, very top, um, you're going to see uh, in, in uh, green um, is, is to learn more about our inner circle, you know, join our inner circle. 
of, of empowered executives. Because my goal through the inner circle, it, it really, really bothers me when leaders work extremely, extremely hard and don't get the results that they uh, deserve. And they're you know working too long and they're spending way, way too much time at the school, away from their families. Um, so what we do in that, that program is we teach you how to have a more empowered life and to empower others and to empower yourselves and um, you know, ensure that your uh, community um, gets uh, better results through your leadership. So we'd love to see you uh, join us. And uh, right now we're offering a, a, a money back guarantee uh, for your first uh, 90 days in the program. Um, so if you don't think that it's adding any value to, I will, I will pay you back uh, for, for uh, your time. So go to our website, lbleaders.com and, and uh, learn more. And I hope to see you in our next uh, cohort because there's so many other things that come with it. Um, monthly expert training, you know, coaching, and you know, access to all of our online uh, programs. So it's 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 the best personal and professional school leadership uh, development program you could ever be a part of. So I would love to have you as part of our community. So get out there, make sure that September doesn't stink for you, everybody. And uh, my name's Tom, and uh, keep making a difference uh, wherever you are across the globe. Thanks.